Hey everybody, AmpReparGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So I have another Ameritron AL811H here. Been real busy, um, haven't had time to do videos, and I always say that, but it's busy, busy, busy. Uh, so I'm going to go through it, do all the repairs to it, and some modifications. So has the old pink resistors for the equalization slash bleeder resistors, has newer caps, but the old resistors. It has a date code of 2008. I will ground the grids the better way. Plate choke, plate choke looks okay. The SO239s feel okay. So I gotta take this whole assembly out and check everything over. Uh, look what I did. I actually cleaned my shop. <laughs> so many people were sending me comments. My uh, 922 I have to repair. This radio has to go out for repair. I do not work on radios, but this is my personal radio my buddy gave me. Years and years and years ago, the receivers messed up. These are going out to a customer. Those are going to someone else. I'm going to move my spectrum analyzer. This is a mono van 80 meter amp that will be moved. I'll clear this stuff off. This is going away. This is going away. That's my test radio. So, looks a lot better, huh? Okay, so I'm going to get to work and I will show you the amp when it's all done. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm going to try and make this short and sweet. I have the socket assembly removed and I wanted to go over a critical modification that Ameritron does that I don't see in all of the amplifiers and I always add it and I always alter it a little bit if need be like I'm going to do in this one. So. The 811 tube is notorious for flashing from the plate to the filament. And when that happens, you can damage the input circuit. You could damage your, a lot of times you will damage the receiver in your radio, in your transceiver. So what they did was add a component called a gas discharge tube. So this one's rated for 150 volts. You know, ends up shorting if you know it might not get it'll you know short like an intermittent and then if it does it too many times it'll short you know completely short you know if if the rated voltage is is met so they added one over here on one side of the filament and they also have metal oxide variester that's actually failed they've had this mov in different areas they've sometimes they'll put two over here but it's basically in parallel to ground with one side of the AC side of the filament choke where the filament winding feeds the choke. So I don't like the fact it's over here. First off, it's only across one side and it has to go through the trace. So I put one per side of the filament at the actual socket. All four socket filament connections are wired in par parallel, so only two are needed. I remove the metal oxide variester. If it has more than one, I remove all of them. Usually there are two. Um, this is a newer board, so it has one. So, a dollar something each. I think they're like a dollar twenty each. A lot cheaper than sending a radio out to get repaired. <laughs> so, okay, well, I'm going to get to work and I will be back soon. Stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to show the bottom of the sockets. This has four sockets, as you can see. All filaments are wired in parallel. You always want to check the solder connections for the filament. Two of the connections are for the filament per socket. One does nothing, one is for the grid. That one that has nothing connected to it, the pin coming out of the tube for that connection does nothing electrically within the tube. It's not connected to anything. So that's why it's so critical to maintain a good connection between that one grid pin and ground. If you lose that connection, there's a good chance you'll end up taking the tube out. So the way they make the connection to ground is through this screw. A lot of times these nuts loosen up. There's nothing locking that nut in place, plus you're going through the screw. So what I do is I drill a hole and I go directly to the chassis. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all done up. I'll, I'll ground the grids, 
the way I do it and I will add the gas the two gas discharge tubes and I will be back to show it and actually look there's looks like it looks like a, a washer or something stuck in here so a split washer so I'll get that out it's actually wedged between the socket and the chassis so it's probably there from when it was made okay I'll be back okay all set so let's go over it real quick so each grid connection goes directly to the chassis now through a screw with a cap nut. I reuse the tab and I solder it. So I also compress the clips so they have a nice strong grip on the pins and the sockets. I add the gas discharge tubes, one per side of the filament because all four, like I said before, are in parallel, so you only need one per side. So now if a tube were to flash from the plate to the filament, this will bring it to ground on either side. Some of these have a split washer on under the head of the screw, but some do not. Either way, these fiber washers deteriorate over time and the nuts still loosen up. So it's critical to ground the grids directly to the chassis. It's just that you don't want an open grid. Unless you want to get new tubes, then um, that's up to you. But <laughs> Okay, so that's that. I'm going to put it back in, and I will show you the next step. See you soon. Okay, so the assembly's back in. I'm going to pull out the pink resistors. These are prone to failing. Caps are good, newer style, so you put good resistors in. The caps will last for years and years. Um, you know, the resistors, from what I've seen, are usually 99.9% .9 of the time the reason why the cap fails and it's the pink ones that fail so I'll do that and also don't forget to reinstall your safety choke that stops DC from appearing on your output coax if your plate blocker or plate blockers were to fail depending on how many are in the amp it says two also before you take the shaft out I always mark it so I get it back into alignment that input rotary is out of alignment when you go to key it the RF won't go to the proper PI input coil and your transceiver will see a highest gear okay so that's that I will be back once I have these removed and the new ones installed stay tuned the bleeder slash equalization resistors have been installed 50k 10 waters I replaced the voltage divider circuit resistors one of the legs was snapped off so put new resistors in new heat shrink reconnect with the wire that feeds back to the center tap of the filament so everything else is all set also replace the meter protection diode new set of pentalab tubes match quad awesome company can't say enough good stuff about them. Great people over there. So, if you need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. There's my website and my phone number. AmpRepairGuy.com 203-892-4119 Please like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Catch you later.